the issue here, of course, is going to be that uh, President Obama is going to be raising the minimum wage by e executive action on uh, all workers who are uh, federally contracted, uh, or I should say under federal um, uh, contractors, uh, to at least $10.10 an hour. Like I said earlier, this is going to impact 560 thousand workers. Um, there's another 1.4 million low-wage workers whose jobs are supported indirectly by federal spending who won't be affected by this change. Um, but ultimately, you know, this is part of the, at least is, you know, based upon the reporting that we've seen, the administration has determined at this point that uh, their uh, their legacy in terms of uh, their effectiveness is in danger right now, and that uh, 2013 was a bit of a lost year for the Obama administration. I mean, I've read some stuff that I found quite shocking, frankly, that the administration is really just now learning about Republicans uh, and their obstruction, which is, you know, Sort of shocking, but th uh, be that as it may, and let's take that at uh, face value for the time being. Uh, the idea here is to create some type of momentum um, and to to drag the Republicans onto some very thin ice when they are arguing against the minimum wage. I mean, we have mentioned countless times on this program that study after study, which uh, the professor referenced briefly anyways, that when you raise the minimum wage in a, uh, a county of, a, of state A, let's say, that is contiguous to another county in state B, which has not raised their uh, statewide minimum wage, you see no discernible impact on employment levels between those two counties, which suggests that there is very little cost in terms of jobs in raising the minimum wage. And in fact, uh, Monopsony argues that um, you would also see very little rise in prices in this instance because of uh, one in terms of uh, basically uh, because you have uh, the the employer has this sort of monopoly on hiring. And because it continues to attract workers, you have less turnover, there's less uh, of costs associated with that. But uh, politically speaking, the, um, on this uh, U.S. contracts, Understand that CEOs of these companies that get these U.S. contracts make $24 billion in taxpayer money each year. We have um, many of these companies who regularly violate U.S. labor laws. In 2012, uh, con companies doing business with the federal government had a combined 1,800 labor law violations. And um, again, of course, you know, uh, the executive has the power to set specifics as to whom they will give federal contracts to. And so this is a rather uncontroversial move in some respects, at least in terms of the law. Many people are also asking at this point, however, if the president can and will mandate a minimum wage increase for government contracts, why not also do the same for a version of the Employment Non-Discrimination Act or ENDA for federal contractors? ENDA, of course, says that you cannot discriminate against a potential worker for being gay. And um, I, I don't know why the president would think that's a, a bridge too far to go, but um, there's been no reporting that he's going to do the same uh, for this.